Good evening, this is George Lees, uh, talking from Kelso in Scotland, that's Professor George Lees. Uh, I made a video a couple of days ago on uh, the magic circle of law firms uh, and John Lamont's connections to that. John Lamont is a local MSP in the Borders region, uh, he operates around the Coldstream area, uh, right near the national border is represented in recent months the Better Off Together movement uh, but he is a parliamentarian in the Scottish Parliament he's got a history as an advisor in law uh, and you can see there the previous companies he's worked for Brodie's, remember Miss Jean Brodie and the Cramond issues uh, that will come into the conversation later on uh, Bristow's and this one is in the magic circle which is Freshfields, Brookhouse and Derringer LLP Limited Liability Partnership John was educated at the University of Glasgow he's a very articulate guy eh, and he's aware of the massive frauds in the UK eh, particularly those in Westminster but he feels incapable as an MP or an MSP in Scotland of changing the future of Scotland by reporting fraud to law enforcement all of the crimes and the frauds that we have reported to him uh, and to all of my other political representatives and to the head of the SNP and the Scottish Government have been completely ignored it could have won the Scottish Government independence if they had chosen to reveal the facts that my research has revealed now Freshfields, Brookhouse and Derringer LLP is one of the biggest law firms I've made a video on the joke about the Brookhouse bit being Hitler's birthplace the Derringer is the wee gun in the Bond movies and Freshfields is like a reference to the Pottersfield joke in It's a Wonderful Life they have new territories to explore and to steal from and the take for this company is massive. Each of the partners draws in an equity total of over a million pounds per annum. Okay, their headquarters uh, is in Fleet Street in London, which is famous for the British media when we had free press before Rupert Murdoch <laughs> uh, and the Rothschilds quashed the free press concept. Now I just want you to refer you this is a corporate document it's on the British Business Registry it's from Company Check and Stefan Koch one of the people that is involved in weapons scams uh, and who some people have alleged died in the Oban region in Scotland he joined the board in May of this year uh, now that could be a different Stefan Koch and the subject of almost all of what I'm going to talk about later on may not be John Lamont it's another Lamont that operates in a Borders and Scottish cabal that takes us into David Murray's empire that's Sir David Murray the Rangers thief with his headquarters in Dunedin where I used to work as a professor of neuroscience okay in the last video I proclaimed for you that effectively Freshfields, Brookhouse and Derringer was just another subsidiary of the Rothschilds family's operations and this time I have been able to find the uh, the uh, Freshfield Angel there it is in a small image but further down the page we can see how immensely prestigious this company is there's the revenue statement 1.3 Two three billion in 2013-14, and profit per equity partner 1.48 million in that same year. That's per partner in this massive firm. This is when the various parts of the firm amalgamated, and it is an expert in corporate law and mergers and acquisitions. So, let's scan down to see more of the evidence of the Freshfields Angel and the imagery 
that suggests to me that that is the same as they call it a spear I believe it looks much more like one of the five arrows that the Rothschilds released into the free world that has now rendered the world into slavery there we have the angel with the spear which I'm interpreting as an arrow the five arrows were sent from Frankfurt uh, and this is an image of St Michael the Jewish angel ok we've told you that story in part already I'm now going to skim through the headlines of the creation of this company and the massively influential clients that it has here are the cities that it operates in Washington DC, Vienna, Tokyo, Singapore, Shanghai, Rome, Paris, New York Munich, Moscow, Milan, Madrid, London, Hong Kong, Ho Chi Minh City, Hanoi, Frankfurt <laughs> and Hamburg, Hanseatic League ties into my local region and the seaport of Berwick just 22 miles down the road very close to John's constituency Dusseldorf, Cologne, Brussels, Berlin, Beijing, Bahrain Amsterdam, Abu Dhabi 27 offices in 16 countries and 17 jurisdictions ok I'm now going to scan up to the top and we can see on the side here that I've highlighted some issues for you so the first client this is the legal representatives for the Bank of England prominent clients have included William Gladstone Prime Minister of the UK, Chancellor of the Exchequer, Sir Robert Peel, the head of the Met Police and the legendary Freemason. We've talked about him and his roles in the culling of returning troops and the anti-communist movement in the UK. Prime Minister of the United Kingdom, Chancellor of the Exchequer, Nathan Mayer Rothschild, founder of the investment bank Rothschild, not a mention of the Bank of England. <laughs> the first and second Lord Carrington and the banking house funded by Robert Smith Lord Acton then Prime Minister of Naples you can see the Anglo-American influence on the world uh, at that time it was only the Anglo influence Earl Stanhope the Earl of Ellenborough Governor General of India we've talked about and I've written about on my website the Jagir, Muhammad Ali, the links to Lord McCartney of Liverpool and all of the massive manipulation and the money lending that means that the empire which Victoria leads is massive and is entirely enslaved by the financial services and legal sectors in the UK okay ok so let's just skip through the highlights of what this company does and its massive links so the fresh fields I believe is a joke about the potter's field the potter's field is mentioned as a venue for the internment of ashes even in the Christian Bible the millennium merger eh, and that means that the three firms came together in the year 2000 uh, and you remember all the fuss about the potential for us having a computer crash all across the free world because of the transition from the 1990s into the noughties uh, and you've got the revelation that in 2014 it's quite safe to reveal now that this law firm was the official legal services provider to the London 2012 Olympics and Paralympic Games where Lord Condon the former head of the military police the, the London Metropolitan Police in this day and age was able to defraud the funders of the Olympics aka the taxpayer and the British public of the money that was earned by Lord Condon's G4S Nick Buckles made millions of pounds out of that event they reneged on their commitment to the contract they kept the cash 
and the legal services provider that kept them immune from prosecution was Freshfields, Brookhouse and Derringer. They are very prestigious, globally esteemed and feared by innocent people all around the world <laughs> in all of those 27 globalised offices. This is one of five of the largest firms in the world and in the earlier video you can get more details of that. Okay, so we've profiled the firms, we've profiled the other ones, Clifford Chance, I forget what all five of them are, but you can find that on Wikipedia. Uh, Slaughter is one of the companies uh, and anyway and there's one of the firms that's the other company that was involved with uh, John Lamont now the links to fascism the links to Germany the links to the Rothschilds and the profiteers in war are immense Miss Jean Brodie is the prominent fascist uh, and Brodie's LLP is used by these companies and John Lamont has worked there I cannot find him on the directory registrations like Stephen Koch uh, but he's involved with the companies and he's now involved as an advisor to the Scottish Government on law enforcement and the stories I've told to Jim Fetzer and to the global audience about the manipulation of the Scottish police system, the jokes that they share and the jokes that they share at dead children and the jokes that are perpetrated about the ownership of Scotland's mountains, uh, the involvement of the two Ronnies that laugh at the appointment of Lord Mackay of Clashfern and in the year of the referendum they appointed a company or they created a company in Parliament Square in Edinburgh that was there to obfuscate the evidence that the really big criminals are in the Westminster building. So the SNP and the Scottish Government condoned the appointment of new legal firms to put down the information that I have been trying desperately for the last three to four years to release, including the information on the nuclear weapons scam involving Eccleston Square in London and the Trident 3 and Trident 4 projects. Okay, I'm now going to take us back to the video I started to make on the other Lamont who could well be John Lamont under a pseudonym and a false business register declaration. His name is Julian. There we've got the fresh fields Stefan Koch interlock and this is still okay so here we've got the introduction of the character again that we track down in part all of the interlocks to him uh, that means that when you open the, the uh, company check site what you do is you find the individual that you want to investigate this one, remember, was registered at Cramond, where the fascists used to spend the weekend in the Jean Brodie movie. Yeah, and the character that she was was her lover was the actor that played uh, one of the people in the Great Escape movie, which is a massive joke at the complicity of the two sides in wartime to profit and to cull only the poor people and the innocent bystanders. In the prisoner of war camps like Colditz, you were allowed to have your Batman, your personal attendant, with you. That's where the elites were imprisoned, in inverted commas. The whole thing is a profiteering money stream. Okay. So the registered address is One Brig House Park Court, Cramond, Edinburgh. His company direct director number is 905661842, and we got down to a series of interlocks that we explored in part before my batteries 
ran out in the last video I made. Let's see whether or not that takes us back to the same point in time on that massive list. Oh no, it doesn't. Okay, let's go up and just run through the highlights again because this time I have highlighted in yellow the names of the various companies uh, and what was so I remember that we got through Talisker Whiskey uh, and now this list is immense it takes us into vast estates in England vast estates in Scotland on both sides of the country uh, and a cabal of people that are deployed in the city of London all around the UK uh, and the David Murray links take us into Dunedin where his parent company resides okay so there we've got roughly there's Alan Runciman and we mentioned him Stephen Marbot that's one of the companies Wilmerton Properties Limited another one of the companies look what they're doing here there you've got a company where Brian Reed Limited previous secretary for Stephen Marbot uh, and that was that was able to crash 26,941 of the total of 27,000 companies that it dealt with uh, <laughs> it is amazing how these uh, networks operate ok Parker is the name of one of our local council leaders at one time I have no way of knowing whether that person is involved but remember that this person's registered in Cramon near Edinburgh and that this goes all the way down to the south of England and onto different continents eventually some of the registries of directors take you into Germany as we've already seen with the law firms above uh, so there's William Kaiser he was also mentioned in the last one there's a new company there's the Osborne person that was also mentioned Ashby Park Investments Limited no highlights there Alba Trees PLC now Alba is the name of a place in Italy where some of the pro-Nazi popes uh, and their assistants like Archbishop Hudol were placed in uh, when they were beyond retirement in the Vatican uh, and they are really elite places there's a massive lake in Rome uh, and Alba is adjacent to that some of the places where either Hudol or Pope Pius were sent to after the war with the Canaries used as the Nazi laundering location and the Canary sitting on Pope Pius's shoulder was a vicious joke about that Alba is linked into all those scams one of the residences for the defectors from the Nazi supporters in the Vatican the place of residence became a park hotel now the park relevance and the discovery and exploration of Africa is relevant to Selkirk and the Dukes of the Buclou and some of the estates you'll hear about later on we've got a Murray in there it's a relatively anonymous Murray we've got a Hyde, a Mr Hyde character uh, we've got Heggies, Hepburn Scots uh, and Walter Scott is alive and well and there's another legendary name Peter James Church some of the videos I've made are about the fraud in the kirk in the chapel all of the messianic religions are a fraud and a massive money stream there's the Queen's Equity who runs the Beg Group and takes £2,000 from every participating student in that 
Sub-Saharan Africa charity, Sub-Saharan Africa stays in poverty, none of its infrastructure improves, and since my son visited, they have imposed the Ebola scandal to try and sideshow all of the vital information I am releasing on the elites, frauds, and their crimes against the people. Another company there. There's a K. Rooney, uh, June K. Rooney, previous secretary. Stortex Microfilm Limited. John Simon, Bruce McCowan. We mentioned that in the last video. We're getting down to Drummond Wallace, uh, and that takes us into Lord Tankerville. Uh, Lord Wallace of Tankerville, uh, who is the Attorney General or the Lord Advocate for Scotland since I believe 2010 Ah, now we mentioned Ronnie Biggs we mentioned Bernie Eccleston and we mentioned the false news and the cover up of the Russian spying scandal which involved the uh, very high end prostitute Christine Keeler on the board of this company we have Mr. Simon Nicholas Keeler. All of the time you get people implanted into popular culture, mentioned in the news, and all of that covers up the criminal cabals that run the fa financial services frauds or the Ponzi schemes. Now some of these companies could well be decent. Uh, I just want you to show you the power of peer pressure there's Julian Callum Lamont. He's on all of these listings because what we're looking at is his interlocks and all of the directors on all of the companies that he's involved in. Chettleborough International Limited, Boxit Document Solutions, Mr. John Simon Bruce McCowan, Graham John Scott, Wallace again, Nicholas Keeler again, MMH A2S2 Limited, registered in Birmingham. So we're south of the border now. Uh, we've got Mr. Graham Everett Hill. Uh, the Everett's are involved with shipping. They're involved with Michael Moore. They're mutual Facebook friends with me and Michael Moore and I've got no way of knowing whether or not this is a direct family member of the Hexham Everett's. Uh, but there is one of the world's big criminals, Sir David Edward Murray. His investment trust is now with Aberdeen Asset Management. It sponsors, in inverted commas, many of the sporting events in Scotland, including the Melrose Sevens. Uh, and what you've got there right next to him is a McGill, uh, and we've got David William Murray Home and we mentioned the links potentially to British Prime Ministers like Sir Alec Douglas Home but again the genealogy is very difficult to track down uh, okay let's scan another Everett, a different one Wilson's another Prime Ministerial name now I've highlighted Sarah Tahir She's relatively innocent, although she has crashed lots of companies in the past. But when I see that, it just takes me straight into the Egyptian revolution uh, and what happened on Tahrir, Tahrir Square and on the Tahrir Bridge in recent years when you had the uprisings in Egypt. You had a democratic election of a new president and he was jailed and the tank commander that is Mubarak who was jailed for failing to prevent genocide in Egypt was released so that he could spend the one billion pounds a year that you said give him, you said US aid give Egypt to keep their people in tyranny. The next company is Stortex Group Limited. Again you've got the McCowan character uh, and we've got Mr. Simon Patrick Ellis. 
McDonald's, Graham John Scott, the Wallace character again. So here we're into the Murray Steele's empire. Okay, and David Douglas Murray, Everett Hills, Samuel William Peter Collard. Uh, sorry, I just clicked on one of the URLs by mistake. Sir David Edward Murray again. 198 companies. It's a very, very busy man. Uh, Mr. David William Murray Home. Fletcher's also in the porridge joke. Lawson. Uh, Weir, Freeland. No highlights there, so let's just keep going. Johnson has been much in the news recently. Uh, I'm not sure what that joke is, and I've not really unearthed why he's all over the media. There's another company, MMH ATI Limited. Everett Hills again. William Murray Home again. Malcolm Robert Surrey. Miss Tahir doing the mopping up and the crashing of those uh, 86 companies. Stortext SH Limited. Polson. Mm, could be taken for Poulton. Uh, we've had a Ken Buchanan who was a boxing champion way back when. The killer name again. First time I've seen it on the business registry. The very week that we mentioned Christine Keeler and the Russian spies in Watford <laughs> near all of my relatives uh, who have unfriended me because of my dedication to fraud research and the revelation of the truths about almost every sector in life being corrupted but everybody just thinks their little bit does not harm society ATG Properties Limited Kenneth Andrew Coburn, Sir David Edward Murray, property magnet. Arthur John Fletch, Mr. Julian Callum Lamont, he's the man that is interlocked to all of these. There's the Johnson character again. Scotman Nutrition Limited, Mr. Andrew James Robertson. Because of the Robertson name being big time in the criminal registers in the HSBC earnings stream, uh, and in the links to the Scottish Arab uh, Chamber of Commerce uh, I've been tempted to have a look at him but he's relatively innocent and low life compared to those massive fundraisers in those giant New World Order banks that have sprung up since the noughties there's a Katie Sinclair, a legendary name in Jedburgh history uh, and loads and loads of borders connections on these listings because many of the bosses are involved in the running of the state the estates like the Buclew properties David Howard Peck you remember Gregory Peck in Hollywood fiction uh, if they had to cover something up in the business world it's quite easy to do it using a celebrity on TV or in the Zionist film making industry John Ronald Kerr Glenn the Duke of Buccleuch Richard W. J. M. Scott now the complicated genealogy is way over the simple man's head I have no way of knowing how many Dukes of Buccleuch there are <laughs> but it is very difficult to track it and to find the locations uh, unless you're married into these families uh, and the current secretary is McLeod and we've got a Mr John Nielsen Kerr that I have had, have had a look at and he is I believe likely to be one of the rugby players uh, I played against a jock Kerr when I was a schoolboy at Kelso he played for Peebles in those days and he got into the national team and a few caps like Sir Bill Gamble I don't think this Jock Kerr or John Nielsen Kerr has been knighted, but he does take you into other massive estates in the Haddington region, as we'll see later on. Uh, 
Jonathan Rosedale, Mordaunt McQueen, Michael Drummond Clark. Drummond is the name of the sheriff on my case in Jedburgh Law Courts. Now, what have we got now? Michael Drummond Clark, Michael James McGrath. Okay, most of these directors or secretaries have large numbers of companies to handle uh, and uh, many of them are just Ponzi schemes uh, and just numbered shelves. Cheviot Investments Limited. Uh, Cheviots are the range of hills between Scotland and England that used to be uh, inhabited by the reavers, the, comp the families that used to go across the border, steal the sheep, drag the women back by the hair uh, and rape and pillage them so that they could become the mum in the family home. Uh, and things have gotten much more civilised now, but Michael Moore still fails to understand the killing of all of those people at Flodden and why we're still at war perpetually. Even on Remembrance Sunday, the people on this list demonise Islam and fearmonger and they make religious worshippers they twist their minds to make it look as if the innocent countries overseas are a threat to our national security so that they can continue to steal from the ordinary simpletons in this country and the simpletons pay the taxes these guys are the millionaires uh, let's go down to the next highlight Taras Tara the uh, joke about land being the only thing worth having. So we've seen the Pottersfield joke. Tara is the movie that was made in 1939 on the verge of World War Two uh, about, I, what, I forget the name of it, uh, it was Red Butler and it was uh, a joke about the American Revolution and the slavery issues and the culling of vast numbers of people in North America fighting against the Confederates in the southern parts and the elite estates down there which Tara was one of Gone with the Wind Oh we've got a Robert Edward Bowden on this list right next door to the Duke of Buccleuch Richard W. J. M. Scott Bowden is a friend of mine, or used to be, uh, but he did not like me to take investigations up into the aristocracy, the monarchy, or the Rothschilds. Mr. Robert Edward Bowden. I will have a look at him later on if there is time. James Alexander Kenneth MacLeod. Massive Ponzi scheme north and south of the border so let's see if we can find him on e.g. James Alexander there's the Kerr character let's have a wee look at him this is the Jock Kerr I think that I played rugby with the reason I think that is because he's involved. There's the, some of the Ponzi schemes and Strat. There are hundreds of Ponzi shells for and Strat. And when we get to one of the duchesses, she uses quite clearly one of those Ponzi shells. She's only got two registrations. One's a Ponzi number and a shelf co. Uh, okay. Uh, Strathern and Blair. Now there's a name to juggle with. <laughs> Tony Blair. We've disclosed some of his alternative directorial labors in uh, uh, labels in earlier videos. Fine Gold Petroleum Limited. Superlative Spirits Company. Maria 1 Limited and Strat 346 Limited, 348 Limited, Celtic Renewables Limited and Strat number 325, 
This is Jock Kerr. He used to play in the centre for uh, Scotland, where we only had 15 numbered jerseys on the pitch. There's Anstrat number 349. If it is not you, Jock Kerr, for Peebles, I apologise sincerely. If it's any of your relatives, can I have the details? Because we might be able to get him banged up. Anstrat 381383, RML 526, Preservation Community Interest Company. 526 of the batards. Anstrat Neo Petrol International Group Limited. Oil and Gas. Virtual Products. The Gresham Publishing. Fim Potatoes. Arniston Finance Company Limited, Nexum St Andrews Limited, Lothian BS Holdings Limited, Bullshit Holdings, University of Strathclyde Education Limited. I don't know whether or not that is Strathclyde, but it is the education sector allegedly, uh, and that is very disturbing <laughs> that the education sector is involved with a director that is prepared to run almost 400 Ponzi shells. Edinburgh College Development Trust. Glen Mucklock Renewable Energies. They're in the wind power sector, like Donald Trump and his Ponzi schemes in Scotland, despite the false news that he detests wind power, especially if it's within range of his golf courses. The Association of European Lawyers. Yet we've talked about the globalisation of the magic circle. You've got associations of European conglomerated lawyers on the board of a man that runs 400 Ponzi shelves. Amaya Europe, the new Melville Bridge Club Limited. Now my old boss, the Dr Jones in Dunedin, played bridge in Auckland with uh, Omar Sharif, you know, the famous actor that was in the uh, Lawrence of Arabia movie. Uh, they play elite bridge all around the world uh, and it unites people from distant continents. Anstrat nominees. Ah, this is the one that made me think that Jock Kerr, the rugby player, may be involved in this Sports Dispute Resolution Panel Limited Director since 2008 uh, and we're Brantsfield Medical Practice so we've got Education Sport uh, and Globalised Ponzi Shelves <laughs> uh, Right, so let's go back to the interlocks and see if we can find some other highlighted issues that might be a cause for concern. Interlocks. There we go. You should learn if you're interested in fraud and you have lost your job because you're an innocent party and you've got any sort of pension or something that you can live off, then you should learn how to use company check. Ah, oh, shit, it's taken us back to the bottom of the page every time we go back there so we're gonna have to scan up to find Jock Care or wherever we were before no, it's too far down this is massive it runs all across the UK it involves massive estates, many of whom which are not lived in, but the estate is so large that it provides a tourist attraction. There is a staff base to run the tourist end of it, but these things are run from offices on that estate that until I discovered them today are relatively anonymous. I will give you all of the details because this is in the public interest that the news gets out how big the cabal is, how prestigious its leaders are, and all of them uh, are married into historic figures and lineages in Scottish history. 
and in the history of Rangers Football Club which has taken a major fall in its status and its funding since David Murray and that little batard in Granton on Spey, Craig White, defrauded them of everything that the supporters plough into the club. A lot of it is stock market fraud. They have massive shareholding r releases and basically they're just bunging their friends as much as they can get away with and they completely renege on the tax burden. Right then, we're still below where we... L oh, that could be where we left off. Nope. John Nielsen Kerr. So that's the man that we've just investigated. That's the one north and south of the border. This is where we left off, I believe. Okay, Glenn Mucklock Restoration. Stephen Pringle, that was a school friend of mine. Uh, could not be the same one. <laughs> uh, oops, there he is again on Glen Mucklock Minerals Limited. Uh, there's another McGrath. There's Jock Kerr again, just flitting by. Uh, oh, 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 this is a company in my town. Andrew Gerard Weems, David John Nairn. Stuart John Risk Buchan, Buchanan, Mr. Alan Forrest. I've had a few run-ins with dentists recently, and there's an Alan Forrest that runs dentistry, but to my knowledge, he does not have a Nisbet on the end of his name, but that could be useful in identity fraud. If I meet him in the pavement tomorrow blushing, I will let you know, <laughs> and we can continue with the conspiracy theories till the cows come home. They are also in the cow sector, further down the page. Uh, the fine beef product. Skeen Edwards WS resigned 116 of the 162 companies that they run. Now I clicked on this and this is down towards the Ord region I think. Uh, but let's keep going. Now Granton could be Granton on Spey or Granton where the civil service is now run out of Edinburgh in the Leith region where I used to have relatives who lived there devout Christians one of them was a Batman for a military man <laughs> uh, Earl of Dalkeith now this is where it gets complicated for a simpleton from a rural area because I don't know whether or not these are the same people but when you see the legendary names that are all banded together in that marital vow that brings powerful men into the bedchamber of powerful women here we have the Earl of Dalkeith Richard Walter John Montague Douglas Ooh, the suspense is killing me and they may string me up for revealing it so Douglas Scott Earl of Dalkeith now Dalkeith is a very divided town it clearly has elite regions it used to be I think a mining town uh, and I've visited it and I've gone into the housing schemes and a lot of them are very very poor I thought the wealth divide was confined to sporting stars who have come out of those very poor housing estates and have been appointed to the Scottish national team and the Manchester United team. Now that's Darren Fletcher. Uh, he's a Scottish international, a very good player, has a bowel illness that has kept him out of the game for a period and he earns huge amounts of money but the rest of Dalkeith is relatively poor uh, and it is really sad to see wealth divide of that magnitude uh, and and I've worked with people from Dalkeith they're decent I've ferried them to and from uh, our place of work at Boots which is also the victim of a massive pan-continental financial scam involving the Italian mafias that is not in this story. Mm. 
Mr. Walter, Francis, John, Duke of Buccleuch, uh -oh. These are what in the borders in the rustic areas we call ballop relations. The ballop is the zipper on your trousers. So this is Mr. Walter Francis, John, Duke of Buccleuch and Queensbury. That's Queensbury where they invented the rules for boxing. <laughs> uh, right then, we've got a miller on the list. We've got Yukon Hydroelectric Company Limited. Now this one is interesting because I had never heard of Yukon before and when you look it up on Wikipedia it takes you across to Galloway. Now have you heard of George Galloway? The freedom fighter in Bradford who was chucked out of the Big Brother house uh, and he was on rehab for a time. Now this could not possibly be a cover for George Galloway because uh, there are no directors but when you go to Galloway you find that that is the place not where the Yukon Hydroelectric Company is but that's where the Yukon is that's where the Yukon place is and I've got more on that here let's just click on that particular part of the page so that we return to that later on and let's see what we find when we open up my investigations in the Yukon. What it says there is the Yukon Hydro Company does not run out of the west of Scotland, it actually runs out of Bow Hill in Selkirk <laughs> where the Steele family, that's David Steele, who's on the funding scams in the funding of the Ukraine with the Fleming family and is into all of the frauds with the inauguration of the Scottish Parliament building. He's built a peel tower that he lives in at the public's expense and when I visit it, when I'm on fishing trips in the nearby region with the local Selkirk Freemasons who've sacked me a couple of times now, you find that his garage is full of NHS boxes as if he's running a little scam out of the NHS sector which is being broadly defrauded by all sorts of criminals all across the UK and all of that is mentioned on my website with the attempts of local doctors who trained as policemen to get me sectioned for my insight into their fraud in the profiteering from pharma and the dismembering of their elderly patients with polypharmacy Stephen Pringle is on the board, that's my old school chum. But I don't know whether or not it's this Kelsonian Stephen Pringle, who seemed to be a relatively decent boy, bloke, and all of these people could be relatively decent. The peer pressure and the companies that they engage as secretaries and as directors in the secretarial sector are often the culprits, and the locals just do their innocent job without very much insight into the implications of it. But when I looked up Yukon, I found out that it was also the location for a Thompson who left Scotland to conquer Kenya. And that person, Selkirk, is also the launch pad for a man called Mungo Park. He, like David Livingstone, explored much of the African content, continent and all of it becomes colonial Africa. Most of it still is under the thrall of G20 business magnets. China is present in sub-Saharan Africa. The Chinese get a lot of flack as being profiteers in local businesses, but what you see from the G20 is massive land grabs. Lyndon B. LaRouche reveals the involvement of the World Wildlife Fund, Prince Charles and the mercenary army leaders like Tim Spicer who now runs the Trident scams. He's actually off the board of Trident 3 and Trident 4 now but all of those are deployed in Eccleston Square in London to steal from the people and to trade in 
a nuclear weapons threat that could lead to human extinction. extinction. So this man, Thompson, went from the Yukon area in Galloway and Burns country and he was a friend of the Out of Africa author in the end who we referred to yesterday in this plowshares issue and the nuclear issues that have occurred in South Africa and Rhodesia under the Breden camp and Stefan Cox involvement. So you can see that we've got weapons profiteers, we've got people that begin to sequester distant continents as part of empires for the five flies in Europe. Right then, uh, we could go down and look at the history of Africa and look at how it was sequestered by the Brits, uh, but I don't think we've got time for that. So let's go back to interlocks. Thompson's gazelle. There's a legacy for you. If you're a biologist, Thompson was from Scotland and he went to Africa and he suppressed Kenya and Kenya is the place where we have had big genocides and we've had war crimes inquests into that and the Queen actually was in Kenya when she was dragged back after the death of her father uh, who was not her father at all as we now know her father was Winston Churchill uh, and everything is twisted and her mother was a maid in the royal household right then so we've gone back to interlocks again and apologies for wasting your time So that was there we've got one of the massive Ballot Relations issue, Walter Francis John Yukon, that's where we left it. Okay so let's keep going down so the hydroelectric scheme there is a hydroelectric scheme in Selkirk and I'm led to believe that it is driven by the steels but there are no steels named on these boards steel has had a f hiding from me and my investigative colleagues because uh, he's into everything in devolved government in Scotland Drumcock Limited John Jonathan Scott Alexander also in oh that, that I know a John Scott in Kelso and he has approached me on the pavements but I doubt that it's him uh, BQ Farming Partnerships Limited these are not crimes by the way it's just I want to show you the magnitude of the cabal how it reaches from the south of England to the north of Scotland uh, and often into Germany <laughs> uh, we've seen the African linkage ever so indirect but it is there and we have owned vast tracts of Africa for eons <laughs> Earl of Dalkeith, Richard Will, Walter, John Montague, Douglas Scott this is the same man as we just named with a lot of breathing Montague Douglas Scott Earl of Dalkeith now I thought the Montagues were the Dukes of Buccleuch but what you've got here is a merger between Walter Scott's family and the Dukes of Buccleuch and the other part of the name I'm not sure the link to Queensbury is really difficult for me to suss out I don't know whether or not that is in Fife up near Loch Leven or whether that is just at the end of the fourth bridge or the two fourth bridges they are now in the process as an infrastructure scam and because they cannot regulate Scotland's traffic 
uh, because of the tram project in the heart of Edinburgh they are building a third fourth bridge the kids have to pay for it sometime in the distant future because <laughs> there's no public funding left and every government and every local government is in a sovereign debt crisis Mr Andrew McKnight Guthrie now that may be no relation at all to General Sir Charles Guthrie of Dundee the NATO warlord and the director on NM Rothschild Bank for all of his time as NATO warlord also sits in the House of Lords since Tony Blair put him there way before they went into the Balkans uh, and just after Tony Blair took democracy against its will into Iraq Walter Francis John Duke of Buccleuch and Queensbury and Bow Hill <laughs> uh, now it is really so Bow Hill's the Selkirk connection they have massive estates at Thornhill on the west side of the country and I'm led to believe that they also have from the videos I watched yesterday uh, estates in the south of England in the I think the Norfolk region BQ Farms South Limited you've got a Sparrow a Burgess a Dolby Murray Capital Anderson Strathairn used by a lot of these companies 168 crashed of 200 loads of Murrays Murray home again ok the Scottish flag is the saltire that's St Andrew's cross St Andrew never lived part of the religious fraud patron saint of 19 countries nevertheless saltire is the cross and it's also a street address for Gregor Lewis Milne's registered directorship on Gregor Milne holds one appointment at one active companies and has held 18 appointments at 17 dissolved companies so this one's bailed out of a lot of them but what I wanted to, you to see was the magnitude of his current assets 110 million uh, and that company has been 6 months at CMS Cameron McKenna LLP two huge names that's Cameron of Lochiel current Prime Minister his dad is a financial magnet too McKenna is a name that I know well in my career path I'm not so well aware of them in financial services or in big business ok so that was something and the address for that is I'm not really sure we'll find that here Saltire Court 20 Castle Terrace so this is right on the Black Rock in Edinburgh, right under the castle. Okay, Gregor Milne, year of birth 1970. Document Sourcing Limited, Outsourcing Limited. John Smiley Mackay, the hit na same name as Lord Mackay of Clash Fern, Scotland's highest ranking law officer throughout all of the period of the porridge joke in the Chipping Norton set laughed at by Barker and by Ronnie Balfour Corbett Lermoth now Lermoth is a fishing beat on the Tweed uh, and this is a name that takes in Orr McConnell Alexander Lermoth obfuscation Coldstream mafias loads of dosh at the bank in Edinburgh so we, this time we've got the whole of the corporate document for them this company has combined cash at bank value is oh no they're in <laughs> deficit combined assets value of 11 million current appointment equals cash at bank 2 million and liabilities of 36 million I'm not sure what they invest in but it does not look very healthy there uh, that's Queen Street Investments everything with the royal affiliation seems to be
kind of toxic <laughs> or lethal ask Princess Diana and Lord Condon and the French chair of the inquest who declared her death to be an unlawful killing the term that they use for murder in the monarchy there's the Lermouth Grove address for James Orr 12 appointments, 12 active companies big figures at the bank but this is the man who's in deficit there's Nicholas Keeler again uh, Drummond Wallace BQ Farms now we're into the agriculture sector the borders and Scotland are legendary for that Scots beef legendary product Walter Francis John Duke of Buclue and Queensbury Buclue Bioenergy Limited now that is when the cow farts they put it in a bag and they sell it to the punters like they do with the big six energy companies with thou well, no, thousands of Ponzi shells but approaching a hundred six companies led by prime ministers like John Major who's the boss at Centrica ever since he privatised it <laughs> it is ruthless Andrew George Wiseman David Burns Damien Turquill now here we're in a new blood Andrew John Sutherland Sutherland could be the Dukes of Sutherland uh, Mr. Damien Turquill Francis Charles Montague Douglas Scott so the Buclues and the Scots of uh, Notting Hill and the Scots of Abbotsford and the Scots of the Walter Scott Foundation are all melded into the same family now I wouldn't have liked to be <laughs> the vicar at the christenings I would get awfully confused uh, reg registered in Bedford Gardens in London the Bedford joke is the joke about the It's a Wonderful Life Bedford Falls uh, issues where you've got little companies that try and stand against multinational business magnets and give people homes that they can afford they love to laugh at the collapse of those old fashioned concepts uh, and there are links to persons called Georgius which are close to my family issues in the fraud sector uh, but they're also based in Derby which intrigues me and takes in one of my old colleagues called Gordon Bowden uh, and there's the Barbara de Giorgio year of birth 1950 fourth floor 30 to 31 Furnival Street in London there's a whole host of Giorgios listed on the directory out of Derby different spelling slightly different spelling this one is a McGuinness now the spelling there is not the same as the spelling further down but the McGuinness that used to play for my local rugby team has in the last and was sorry he's been coaching as a professional coach out of one of the Edinburgh clubs he's been coaching Kelso Rugby Football Club for well, maybe two years now he has replaced the amateur people that I used to play rugby with and were actually Scottish internationals in the amateur era when Scotland, Scotland were capable of winning the Grand Slam occasionally and getting to the World Cup semi-finals and only when Gavin Hastings who's got deep guilt on what they did to London Scottish and his business interests in those scams when they sold London Scottish to the uh, to the Bristol Rugby Club because Bristol got relegated and were going to lose their place in the elite table so London Scottish sold themselves for shame to Bristol <laughs> it is just amazing uh, and so this McGuinness has been chased out of Kelso Rugby Club for their failure to win things uh, and he's been replaced by another coach uh, from Berwick uh, whose family have approached me they are decent, they want to talk 
they want to declare that they understand I'm a researcher and that their family members are relatively innocent and I talk to them and they seem relatively innocent. He's come from another border club called Melrose where the head coach for several decades was Jim Telfer. His nickname is Creamy and only recently have I understood that that is a Freemasonic and fascist label. It means that Jim Telfer, who I've adm admired for keeping Scotland's rugby team competitive with very little funding, as an amateur coach for a long time with Ian McGeechan, <laughs> who runs frauds in the Leeds area now and has nationalised the game and taken all of the money up to the top of the game, uh, that that man's nickname, Creamy, actually means creme de la creme. Again, it takes us back to Miss Jean Brodie, the French connection with the Freemasons and the clubs that come and make the final at Melrose Sivens, where Creamy has been the coach for several decades, but he now coaches the youth team. Uh, all of it is a stitch up. So McGuinness has been displaced. There's a McGuinness on these listings. And when they know that one of Scotland's rugby players that will understand all of this, they begin to swap the players and the coaches around. The new coach at Kelso comes, has played for Melrose, where Creamy was the coach before. <laughs> uh, and we've got Simon Davis, David Brown, and we've got all sorts of links to Browns across the borders that take us down to the Botham family, the Miller family, the religious jokes, the RBL slavery team, uh, and people even in the religious sector that works for, their children work for Lloyds. <laughs> uh, and it is really, really sad that everybody gangs up on innocence and tries to get a little bit of profit that they could have in a decent society if they did it openly without the secret societies and swapping people around through the lodge and the deployment of people even in marriages that involve people of different religious beliefs. It's amazing how pernickety it is and how it means that the Freemasonic children could well be culled in the next global conflict because of their parents' greed and their capacity to demonise other countries to cover these massive financial crimes and financial cabals that the parents just participate in because it's their local landlord and their feudal boss that they have been loyal to since all their relatives were culled at flooding which we talked about a lot in recent videos and the politicians like Jim Hume who's on the board of uh, uh, several of these border scams with one of them with Alistair Hatton who gives the sermons at the Church of Scotland now it is really really sad <laughs> uh, Baclue Property Developments Limited Stephen George Vickers Ahoyk Presence Langham Farms Limited. Langham is a tiny town. Rabsey Nisbet's actor comes from there. It used to provide Scottish front row forwards, back row forwards, Scottish internationals regularly when the game was amateur. Now that everybody has to be paid their bung, the clubs cannot afford a second team bus. <laughs> It is tragic. The administrators change the rules. The number of substitutes sit on the bench. All of them are bored to tears. When I played, it was amateur. There were no substitutes. They were fit. They were competent. They were capable of winning the international championship. And they were capable of getting into the World Cup semi-final. Where Gavin Hastings missed the kick right in front of the posts that allowed England and the rule Britannia concept to prevail. That's Gavin 
Hastings where that king got the arrow in the eye and it was the French that cheated them <laughs> uh, right let's keep going the clue woodlands limited another sector of life we've got the same Earl of Dalkeith with the Montague uh, which is the Buclue label the Douglas label which is the Black Douglas another massive estate that is alleged to have been part of the people that brought down Roxburgh Castle in my hometown which at th those times those bloody bloody times where we were fighting our conflicts in our own country <laughs> in places like Flodden which is just in the road for here yeah the Black Douglas by deceit by using sheep's fleeces were able to get into Roxburgh Castle and take over Roxburgh Castle Roxburgh Castle had been burnt to the ground and rebuilt so many times that the Scots eventually knocked it over because it was too costly for them to keep rebuilding same down at Wark, further down the Tweed, very near John Lamont's constituency. There's only the gable end of the keep tower in the middle of the castle left there. Uh, and the tourist economy that gets robbed in favour of these elites cannot afford to replace the Tourist Scotland sign at Wark Castle. <laughs> Buclew Woodlands Enterprises Limited Buclew States Pension Trustee Company Limited Damien Torquil he's based in London let's have a wee look Grosvenor Fine Jewellery now I got excited about this this is the one that links you into Georgie's in Derby and Grosvenor Fine Jewellery has got the same person as director and company secretary. It isn't a personal at all, it's actually a company limited company secretary uh, and this at least is not a thin blue line. They've been engaged for a couple of years there, four years in fact, so that is relatively innocent, but I thought that this may be into the Grosvenor family that is the Duke of Westminster links uh, and the very wealthy people that marry into the dukedom the Buclew Estates Pension Trustee Fund Limited uh, and I'm not sure why I highlighted this one as something worthy of attention uh, but I cannot see what lit me up oh Trafalgar Retail Services Limited Trafalgar was another battle that Rule Britannia is proud of. Uh, and maybe it's the business register and the locus for that. Bedford Gardens. Oh yeah, that's, so that's the joke that I mentioned earlier on. Bedford Falls was the place where the uh, building and loan company was able to provide loyal service to all of the people that lived in that small town and build them affordable homes uh, and this is presumably this London based person is presumably one of the offspring of the dukes and duchesses let's see what the year of birth was 1969 so this is yet one of the whippersnappers in London high living lifestyle uh, current assets value of 57 million ok uh, let's go back to the interlocks it's a bit tedious I just want you to know how comprehensive these webs are uh, and this is just the British end of it uh, some of them oh, <laughs> some of them take us into continental Europe So this is Turquil, we need to find Turquil. Oh, this is another rugby bit. Alan for a 
Forest Nisbet The Clue Ventures Limited Queen's Ferry Secretaries Limited Ah, there he is. Is that? It was a pension fund that took my attention into London. Yeah, we've been there. So let's see if we can get Turquil again and take it from there. There he is. Damien Turquil Francis Charles, registered in London, Bedford Street. Catherine Barclay, registered in Silvernows in Edinburgh. That may not be one of the legendary Barclays, which is also a joke about biblical texts and agrarian activity. Duchess of Buckley, Elizabeth Marion Francis Montague of Thornhill, director at Anne Strat number 401. So you can see that she's on the pensions fund as a trustee and she's got a Ponzi shelf so that they can pretend that the, pretension, the, the pension fund is not doing too well and it's deployed as a very thin blue line. Can you see it? That's how they work. <laughs> this is the Duchess. There's the pension fund, there's the Ponzi shelf and the long-serving workers get defrauded of everything that they've worked relentlessly for for all their lives like the rest of the financial services sector all the way up and down Lodian Road right then James Galloway George Galloway he might have been created to cover some of this up Mrs Helen Josephine Curry it was a curry at the Church of Scotland on Sunday in Kelso that supported the local councillor with the verification that the ultimate sacrifice in war was well worthwhile and that Jesus Christ's sacrifice to forgive all of the local councillor's sins was also justified and was the basis for the entire fraudulent kirk. The most noble, Sir Richard Walter John Montague Douglas Scott, Thornhill again, but that could be one of the youngsters. It's very different in the label, but I did not click on that and look any further into it. The genealogy is bewildering. If you go to Burke's peerage, it's even more difficult to understand who's who and who's been spawned by who else. Uh, the hyphen gets inserted and the names get longer and longer. Now, these are people that could well have been colleagues of mine this is a conspiracy theory, but they had a pharmacy in Selkirk and they were very friendly with me when I was a trainee pharmacist. That's a Hugh Westerby Tasker. Hugh Tasker is the man I knew. I did not know he had a middle name like Westerby. And that could be either his daughter or his missus, Miss Diane Maureen Tasker. So they're working loyally for the Duke. They're working with Queen's Ferry formations that were appointed for one day in 2003 to launder cash elsewhere. Can you see what is happening to our society? Previous secretary, one of the taskers has been a long servant. Don't know how much of the pension fund that the Duchess might have crashed using the Ponzi shelf will be disappeared from her when she actually packs up in the sector uh, but it is quite tragic to find that your colleagues in a civilized activity and a civilized profession have potentially these could not be the may not be the same people have dropped into a sector that is laundering money out of the country uh, for super rich people who are capable of defrauding their own staff's pension funds BQVT Limited. I've got no idea what they do. Julian Callum Lamont, as in all, Baggett, that's a name in the Lord of the Rings film for one of the Hobbit families. 
Buckley Building Services Limited.